Yo, what's up guys? My name is Gabe. I'm a developer advocate here. And welcome back to another episode from our course on Hex Foundations. Now, in this episode, we will be diving into the ways that you guys can add interactivity to your guys' Hex projects. In Hex, input parameters are a special type of cell that accepts user input and returns a variable as an output to be used in a downstream cell. But why on earth would we want to do this? Well, so you can build up apps like this recommendation engine, for example, where users can adjust sliders to control how many recommendations are made at once. Or like this app, where we can use drop downs to construct visuals that show us the distributions of items in our inventory. Maybe one day we're feeling crazy and we build an app where where users can adjust the inputs being fed into a machine learning model in order to predict customer churn. And all these sliders, drop downs, and check boxes are rigged up directly into the SQL and Python code behind the project, making this app fully dynamic to user input. Now, in this video, we will briefly cover each input parameter, showing you how to set them up and what they can be used for. Starting with... Now, in this category, we have drop downs and multi selects. Each can be configured with static values that you type in manually, or dynamic values that you can add from a data frame or a Python variable. And the real difference between these cells is in their output. Drop downs will return a single string or numeric value, while multi selects will return a list of values, whether that's a string or a numerical value. Now, this is pretty cool, but we're just getting started. And next up, we have. In this category, we have the number input parameter and the slider. Each of these input parameters lets you change the numerical values within your project using a step size. By default, the step size for each parameter is set to one, but you can change this to be as big or as small as your heart desires. Now, both input parameters will output a single numerical value, with the only difference between them is that sliders are restricted to a range of values, while the range of number inputs has no limit, so you can go as big or as small as you possibly want it to be. Now, the next set of input parameters on our list are the boom. On or off, yes or no, true or false. Boolean input parameters such as checkboxes or buttons allow you to control the binary state of variables in your project. Buttons only change state when activated, making them the perfect candidate to control when certain events in your project is executed or triggered. While sitting idle, their output will be set to false. Once activated, three things are going to happen. First, the output variable of the button will be set to true. Second is going to trigger a rerun of all the cells that are dependent on this button. And third, the button's output variable will be set back to false, meaning that you'll have to re-execute the button in order to trigger any of the downstream cells. Now, on the other hand, checkboxes preserve their state until explicitly changed. This makes checkboxes the perfect candidate for seeing alternate versions of stats such as average revenue versus total revenue, or to filter data based on some binary category such as cancelled orders or completed orders. Now, these last few input parameters didn't really fit into a specific category, or they might be the only type in their category, so I've categorized them as The input parameters that fall under this category are table inputs, text inputs, and date input parameters. Table inputs allow for a spreadsheet like workflow where you start with an empty table and you can fill in the values manually. You even have the option to preload data from an existing data frame that's already in your project. And with this, you can edit the values in your data frame, which will output a brand new one. And don't worry if you make a mistake because you can reset the values back to the original data frame with this reset button. Text inputs are pretty straightforward, where a user will input some text and the cell returns a string variable. And last but not least, certainly not least, are date input parameters. Using a date input parameter will open up a calendar based date picker where you can select dates and optionally times. If you're like me and you don't want to select specific fixed dates, you can configure the cell to use relative dates. This allows you to select fixed time intervals relative to the current date. For example, if I wanted to retrieve data from the last three weeks, rather than having to figure out, ah, oh, what was the date three weeks ago? I can just go to my date input parameter and select from three weeks ago. Or I can do three weeks from now, or 10 weeks ago, or one year away. All right, man, and that wraps up another episode from our course on Hex Foundations. Now, as always, I hope you enjoyed this episode and being here with me as much as I enjoyed being with you. Now, I don't really have too many key points to kind of just ran through all of the input parameters, but I encourage you guys to experiment with these input parameters to explore the different ways to use them and what you guys can do and test their limitations. And in the next episode, we will see more practical applications of these input parameters in a real world setting so that you guys can build up a better understanding of how and where you guys can use these input parameters. All right, well, I hope you guys have enjoyed as always, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace. Thank you.